Hey guys, Jared Wesley of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time, and this week's topic, guys, is you don't need to be first, but you do need to be smart. I'm seeing a lot of people do just random stuff. For example, a stock will be up nine bars in a row. Like, Jared, should I short this? Be like, why? Well, it's nine bars up. It has to pull back. No, it doesn't. It could go 13 bars, 18 bars. This is how you bag hold. This is how you YOLO it with diamond hands and bag hold. You just think something should happen. It doesn't have to happen. It's like, I don't know, losing seven hands in a row of blackjack. It's unlikely that you'll lose seven hands in a row, but it's possible and it could happen and it does happen. All right, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about things that maybe statistically are rare, but they do happen so that you don't blow up your account. We're also gonna talk about giving your stocks more room, support, resistance, et cetera, and so forth, giving them room so that you don't get tagged by a few pennies. It's so frustrating when that happens. Um, so we're gonna talk about those topics today to help make you guys better traders. If you like the videos, click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is, you don't need to be first, but you need to be smart. And you're like, well, what does that really mean? Well, you're gonna find out here in a couple minutes. Uh, it's interesting because somebody in the chat room just asked about shorting BA. Um, and I probably could have taken a quick picture of that and thrown it in this lecture. And I feel like the reason I'm doing this lecture is I'm getting a lot of questions about people wanting to buy in short stocks in what I would consider to be somewhat random areas. Um, there is this um, subjective, because that's been a common word today. There's this subjective thought process, okay, that if a stock is up a certain number of bars that it has to pull back. Now remember, what are we really doing as traders? We're taking past information to help us predict future price movement, right? So past price movement to help us predict the future. But we don't just look at a bar, right? Or even five bars in a row. We have to look at the totality of the situation, right? We have to look at everything. What's the market doing? What's the higher time frame looking like? Is there a topping tail? Is there a bottoming tail? Is there a volume spike? Is there a resistance point? Is there a moving average, right? So multiple concepts converging in an area are what we're really after to make any decision ever. Anytime we make a, take a trade, we're looking for multiple concepts. Um, but I just feel like a lot of people are simply Ah, it's up seven bars. Let's try to short it. That's it? There's got to be more than that to it. So uh, we're going to talk about that today. But before we do, before we do, let's talk about when will the insanity stop? Never. But it's fun doing it every week, isn't it? We should almost be thankful it's never going to stop. It gives us a little bit of entertainment. And this week's is a doozy. Um, I'll be honest, I did show this one in the past, uh, but when I was rehashing this lecture and adding stuff to it, I saw this and I was like, I have to do this one again. This one is like one of the most worthy, when will the insanity stops I've ever done and, I ha and it deserves to be done twice. So this one was already done years ago, but I just, I have to bring it back up just so we can all have a chuckle. And um, yeah, and it's funny, ironically, iron this is a true story, ironically, a friend of mine called me yesterday and was asking about this very stock. <laughs> Um, because, well, he's bag holding it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, yes, yes. I'm urging you to read. If you own AMC, I'm urging you to read this. Let's just get on to the good stuff. The squeeze may not be tomorrow and maybe not Monday, but it's coming. I was deep in the red today and in any other scenario, I'd be panicking, but this is bigger than me. It's bigger than you. Yes, you reading this. This is a chance for us to come together as a collective and revolutionize the economy for the better. Oh my gosh, those, that's powerful. That's like Tony Robbins combined with Jesus walking on water. This is bigger than you. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than us. We're going to revolutionize the economy for the better. Well, 
Let's take stock, no pun intended. What has AMC done since revolutionized the economy? Well, it had a 10 to 1 reverse split back in August. A 10 to 1 reverse split back in August when it was at like 20 bucks. And now it's since, after the reverse split, gone down another 90%. So it's now, after a reverse split, $4. So basically, it's like 40 cents is what it is, okay? <sighs> Here's the best part about this, guys. Here's the best part. 14.6 thousand, that's 14,600 comments were posted under this with a 91% upvote. That to me was is almost as enjoyable as the actual comment. The fact that there were 14,000 comments and 91% of them upvoted this. Holy shit. So the answer or the comment that I'm gonna make, <coughs> the subjective comment is yes. Yes, there are that many stupid idiots out there. Yes, there are that many stupid idiots out there. I don't know, only Jerry knows. I don't know, but I'm gonna assume that a large percentage of these 14,000 comments owned this stock at the time, at the time. I don't know, I don't know, I can't confirm that, okay? But 14,000 comments, a good percentage of them probably own this stock. Bag hold that baby to zero, all right? YOLO it, okay? Unbelievable. The stock is literally worth 40 cents right now. It's at what, $4, something like that? What's AMC currently at, four something? And that's after a 10 to one reverse split, it's 40 cents. And this thing was up at like 130 or some shit at some point. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. So, got a good laugh out of it. I know some people, that's not funny, Jared. Well, I did a video on it years ago when it was happening in the middle of it. I did a video on, on uh, GME as well, how they don't make any money, they lose billions of dollars and you people are just idiots, okay, just idiots. Um, and you think that's being rude and mean, it's not. It's why the rich get richer and the other people stay poor because of lack of education on what they should be doing. Because the, the truth is, if you just wanna be honest, these people are doing this because they're trying to get rich quick because they can't or don't have the discipline to do it the long way because it takes decades. That's it, that's the main reason this happens. Get rich quick mentality is the main reason this shit happens. Okay, so all right, let's move on, all right? Let's move on. You guys hear me talk about this all the time. Extended into support. A lot of people like to randomly decide that a stock is at support or near support uh, and randomly like BA decide that, well, it's too extended. There is no such thing as too extended. We've seen that with NVIDIA. We've seen that with SMCI. We saw that with, um, what was that stock, Cliff? It's killing me, not IAA. Went from like 100 to 400 in one day a long time ago. I feel like it began with an L, but I could be wrong. Anyway, there is no such thing as too extended. There's only two extended with pattern boosters, with multiple concepts, but in and of itself, by itself, nothing is ever, quote, too extended. There has to be a reason for a stock to show you or suggest it's going to turn the corner. It doesn't just randomly, magically do it. And if it does, then we're not gonna be in it anyway, okay? So when you take a look, and we're gonna talk about this, you know, quite a few slides today, but here's an example of one of the things we're talking about. Now, extended into support, extended into resistance is a different concept, all right? But I want to take a step back. We're going to re, you know, get back into this extended into support in just a second. But I want to show you a recent example um, of what I am talking about, okay? Um, and I want you to note on two of these three examples where it was happening. I want you to note on two of the three where it was happening, okay? So these are the QQQ, obvious pullback day today. I made this slide after this day. This was February 23rd or 20, 23rd or 24th, okay? So when you take a look at this, the previous day, the market was up 13 or nearly $13 or 3%, okay? Now guys, I don't know about you, but the markets are almost never up 3%. 
almost never, in a, in a 240 day trading year, you could probably count on one or two or three fingers how many days are up 3%. Not in the middle of the day, but they actually close the day up 3%. In this case, nearly $13. Again, you, could, you can count on one hand or less, which means it's extremely rare. It's like a one to two percenter type thing, all right? Then, after such a monster move, the very next day, the market gapped up another $1.50, right? This is nearly a guaranteed pullback day, even if there's no resistance. It's almost always a pullback day or a sideways nothing day. So general rule for the markets, if you have a monster, and I don't mean a big day, I mean a what the F day, that's a two and a half to 3% day or more, okay? And then the next day, the stock gaps up again, you're going to get a pullback, all right? Well, let's take a look. It happened on this day right here, monster gap up, big move after the gap, and then the next day it gaps up. What did it do? There's your pullback, right on the right-hand side. Let the market speak to you, don't tell it what you want, right? Listen to what it's telling you. You don't tell it, you listen to it, all right? Now, let's go back a few more weeks. Early February, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars up on the 60 over two days. And the market went from basically like 418 to 430. That's another $12 move. Now, where is it happening? And by the way, let me do this. Let me just do this. Just for shits and giggles. Okay, let's make it a different color so we can distinguish it. Maybe orange and orange. And where are both of these moves happening? The first one that we talked about is happening at a prior pivot resistance point, right? 439-ish. Well, you're ridiculously extended into a prior pivot. Pull back, duh. You're ridiculously extended into a prior pivot, like triple top pivot, pull back, duh. And that's what happened the next day. Right over here, we weren't at a pivot, but note one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixty minute bars in a row. And the stock of the market in this case went from like 409 all the way up to like, what was the gap up on this day? 413? It's not 413, sorry, 423, 425. So the market was up 14 or $15. And what happened the next day? Gapped up, it pulled back, went sideways. It took two days to rest before it went higher. This is obvious stuff, obvious. Like these are some of the easiest money days that you're gonna get in trading because the odds the market goes higher are like one or 2%. It's possible, of course, because anything's possible. But the odds suggest there's a 90 some percent chance that we're gonna have a pullback day. Guess what? The same concepts apply to stocks. This is the market and we used it for the cues. You know, people a lot of times on like stock tweets or Twitter, they'll send me a private message like, Jared, how did you know the market was gonna pull back today? Because of this. I'm not Nostradamus. I'm just betting on the odds. And the odds are after a three or 4% move up in the market, especially one that's like straight up, not like a controlled move over seven days. I'm talking about one that's straight up, which all three of these moves were, you're going to get a pullback or a sideways day. Look for shorts, look for shorts, that's it. We good? Good, let's move on. You guys have seen this slide, happens to be in a little, little course, a little book called Professional Trading Strategies. You guys ever heard of that? You know? Written by a guy who loves subjectivity and only pontificates on winning days. But that guy, you know, occasionally knows what he's doing. And their slide is right out of that book, okay? What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six red bars, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green bars, okay? But here's the thing. Increased volume after a robust rally or fall usually means a li likely reversal, okay? So if increased volume happens here at the top left, it's likely igniting volume because this is the beginning of the move. But if increased volume happens down here, it's likely ending volume because it's happening after a gazillion bars in a row. Well, that's pretty obvious stuff for people who have taken professional trading strategies. It's basic 101 type stuff, okay? 
My point I'm making, though, is that a lot of people are taking a stock like this, one, two, three, four, five, five or six bars up or down, and they're simply randomly, and that's the key here, randomly saying, oh, Jared, can I buy this? Can I short this? Like BA. Well, why? What else? And this is the important part. What else has it shown you? Has it shown you a bottoming tail? Has it shown you an increased volume? I don't mean slight increase. I mean like double the volume, ending type volume. Is it at resistance or support? Does it have the market in its favor? Is it a wide range bar? Is it a narrow range bar? What's the ATR on the stuff? I mean, other than, oh, look at all that red, it has to bounce. Oh, look at all that green, it has to pull back. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to do anything, right? So. The more accurate the trade is typically how many pattern boosters, how many concepts can you get to converge in the same area. And the more of them you get to converge, the more likely the trade will do what you think it should do. Now, same here on the bottom. If you get increased volume down here, it's likely igniting a new move. If you get increased volume up here on the top right, it's likely ending that move. Okay, pretty basic stuff but it seems to get ignored because you're so enamored by the number of red or green bars. That's only one part of the puzzle, okay? So let's take a look. Let the chart guide you. So here's a stock that gapped down, choppy, huge bottoming tail. What does that tail of that size suggest? That's a pretty good size bottoming tail. Guys, what does that typically suggest? Talk to me. Yeah, well, it's not suggesting a change of direction. It's a factual thing. When there's a bottoming tail, there's a change of direction, right? Buyers are stepping up, right? And there, Brian, thank you, because that's the next thing I was asking. A low has likely been set. When a bottoming tail is as big as that, a low has likely been set, okay? Especially if you look to the left and you see there's some support over here, well, buyers stepped up previously, right? Because look how the stock closed yesterday. It closed really strong, super strong. So if you get this thing all the way down, you leave a monster bottoming tail, which is basically buyers. Yeah, the low probably has been set. So stock moves up, okay? Pulls back, moves up, puts in a little double top, and then pulls back, okay? Now, you could argue this is nearly a triple top, right? Double top here, but then yesterday's high is kind of there as well. So anyway, you have a lot of bars down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars down. So eight bars down, nearing support. What is the expectation? If you're nearing some support after eight bars down, what is the expectation? Talk to me. I'm looking for a one, or, one word answer. What's the expectation? Yeah, a bounce. Some kind of, and that's key. Brian, that's a good point. Some kind of bounce. It doesn't have to be 100% retracement, but some type of bounce could be a shallow bounce, but we're expecting some level of bounce, right? Some type of reversal, okay? Now, if you deem this good enough to take, which is sketchy, right? Because it's been a kind of a choppy move. It's skeptical, right? The entry would be right there and the stop loss would be down here, okay? But the question is, what is the expectation? Are you expecting it to go back to 390.40? I don't know. There's a lot of junk here. There's a little bit of junk at 390. There's some, some of this junk there. Like there's a little bit of hiccup here, but the concept is what I'm after on this slide. Not the actual trade itself. The concept that says, hey, this stock put in a monster bottoming tail. It's pulling back into that same area where buyers previously stepped up and it's doing so. It's not just pulling back here. It's pulling back to an area where buyers stepped up after a significant move back or pullback and a bottoming tail, right? And a bottoming tail. Then it get, comes with a little bit of a turnaround bar and it's almost retested here over here. So you're starting to get more and more ideas or inkling or confirmation that this stock should bounce. Do I love this? Not really. It's okay, but the bounce is what I'm talking about. This stock is at least giving you a suggestion right? Giving you pattern boosters, giving you confirmation that a bounce is likely. How big of a bounce? Nobody knows. Okay. Now let's try this. Now 
what do we have here? We have a stock that gaps up, chops around for the first four or five bars of the day. It chops around. I want you guys to also take note of something. Do you see this green bar right here? Right there, okay? Next to that green bar is a bottoming tail. So at one point in time, this was a wide range red engulfing bar, right? At one point in time, this was a wide range red engulfing bar, okay? Then it left the bottoming tail. So the wide range red bar turned into a huge bottoming tail, which means buyers overcame the sellers, okay, and then pushed the stock higher. This is important. Why? Guys, our goal, our job as traders is to take past price action to help us predict future price movement, okay? Now, you're going, well, where are you going with that? Duh, Jared, we know that already. Yeah, I understand. But the pink line is support from yesterday. The red bars right here, the two red bars that opened the day, they fought a battle down here at like 243.50, whatever that is. They fought a battle. Bottoming tail, red bar tried to go lower, green bar came up. Bottoming tail right here, well, that was a red bar, tried to go lower again. Bottoming tail stepped up. Green bar, bottoming tail, sellers tried to step Note. The point I'm making is every single time sellers tried to push this stock below support, they failed and the buyers took over. Why is that so important? Not that it happened once on this big bottoming tail, but it happened twice. You could argue three times. It happened two to three times. Now, why is that important? Okay, hold on one second here. Forget all this. Why is it important that we know that? Why is it important that we know that? Talk to me. I don't know the future, but no, no one knows the answer to this? Seriously? Sophie says it's too strong to short. Yeah, but I'm not thinking about shorting. It's gapped up. Why would I think about shorting it? It gapped up. So I shouldn't be thinking about shorting it anyway. Buyers keep stepping up at support. Bottoming tail on the first bar of the day. Bottoming tail on the fourth bar of the day. Bottoming tail on the sixth bar of the day. Every single time it comes into this area, buyers step up, step up, step up. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Someone is paying attention. Good entry when it comes back to that support area or higher. This is a great area to buy this stock because it's proven not once, not twice, but three times that every time it comes back to this area, buyers are willing to pay for it and step up. So if we don't know the future yet, that's covered in blue. If this stock comes back to that area, well, it's a no brainer, right? It's a no brainer if the stock comes back to that area and what happens? One, two, three, four bars, back to that area, bottoming tail one, bottoming tail two. Well, we already know, buyers are stepping up, support is here, the entry is right there, stop loss goes under here, it moves higher, goes sideways for two, four, six, eight bars, then what do we get? What is this? Three word answer, what is this? Three word question, three word answer, what is it? Right where that arrow says, what is this? What is it? Oh, thank you, Derek. Those are the three words I am looking for. Confirmation of strength. It is a shakeout, Johnny. That is correct. But it's confirmation of strength. This is beautiful. It's wonderful. Because in a way, it's kind of the second time it happened. Moved up here and then sellers try to come in. Goes sideways. Well, what does a confirmation of strength do well it confirms strength well, duh jared that's what it stands for i know i know i know but 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 what does it do it either gives you an entry if you're not already in it or it gives you an area to add to your trade right if you're not already in it get in it 
Get in it on this little breakout right there. Get in it. Put your stop under that confirmation of strength. If you're already in it, add to it and raise your stop loss. If you're already in it, great. Say you're in it just over 244, your stop's 243. Well, add it like 245.50, okay? So now your cost average is 244.75. Your stop loss is like 244.25, boom. Now you went from a dollar stop to a 50 cent stop. Chops around and then rips. And it goes $5. This is a no-brainer, no-brainer double bottom retest buy because of everything that happened over here. A lot of people will just simply look and go, oh, the stock bounced over here and it's pulling back to here, so let's buy it. There's way more to it than it just, quote, bounced. How did it bounce? What happened inside of these candlesticks to give me the the strength and confirmation I need to know that the second retest is gold. First bar bottoming tail, fourth bar bottoming tail, sixth bar bottoming tail, and it put in a brand new high. Now, would it have been better if it stopped at 245? Yes. If this pullback stopped at 245, it would have been better. But it pulled back and left not one, but two bottoming tails with a little mini volume spike. If you're not sure about it here, maybe wait, but you don't know that this is gonna happen. This is good stuff right here, good stuff. Okay, now let's take a look at this. What is the expectation here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red bars down. One of them's a bottoming tail. This one's a doji bar, etc. We have a lot of bars down. Two of them are super wide range bars. Super duper wide range bars. Followed by four or five more relatively large bars. Then at the bottom we get, oh, what is that? That's a monster volume spike. So note, on the red bars, we have a volume increase, a volume spike. Note, see, if you take a look before the red bars, this is the volume level down here, right? Before the red bars, you can see the volume. The red bars happen, we have an increase in volume, like a double, triple increase in volume, right? Then at the bottom, we get even maybe double the double, right? Let's say this is double volume here. This is quadruple volume compared to this over here, right? It looks like it was doing like maybe half a million, 400,000 shares. Now it's doing over two million, two and a half million. What does that suggest? What does this likely represent? That's it. Andrew got it. Yamane, you're correct. Ending volume. But Andrew's exactly right. A bottom has been set. Everybody who wanted to get out got out. Exactly right, Andrew. That's the exact answer I'm looking for. That's a Jordan answer. This, this low is set. Now, that's not a 100% guarantee, but that's a high high likelihood the low has been set okay the low has been set now you look at that and you think to yourself okay i know the low has been set what do i do about it well you have a couple choices you could say well is it climactic uh, maybe you have to look at it in context the stock dropped about five dollars okay is it climactic in context? I don't know. I don't know this stock well enough, but a $5 drop on a $60 stock, eh, 10%-ish, a little less, eh, hard to say. But I know the low is probably there. So where does this lead us? Well, I could possibly take an entry at 55.50, give it a little bit of room and think, okay, the low has been set. Well, why can't I scalp this? Well, it did go a dollar. Doesn't sound like much, but you're only looking at like a 70 cent stop loss. And it did go a dollar. It went over a dollar, actually, right? Like a dollar fifty, maybe. Okay. So it represents the bottom. Now, this is what ended up actually happening. Same exact stock. Okay. The low was set. That's fact. Bounced up, chopped around, pulled back, bounced up. Chopped around, pulled back, and finally got all the way back. Okay? Where I'm going, though, is 
the concept without knowing the future. And Andrew is correct. The bottom has been set. So only you can decide if this was a tradable bottom or an untradable bottom. But we can see over the next several months, the bottom was definitely set. The stock never went below 55 ever again. Okay. So you could have argued to get in at 55.50, put your stop loss at like 54.50, bounce, pull back, bounce, pull back, and wait for it to break this sideways stage one. And it did, but also time value of money. But you could also get in at 55.50 knowing there's a very high likelihood the low has been set. Like a very high likelihood the low has been set. You do with that information what you please. The reason this is important, though, is because you don't know that this is going to happen. This stock may go all the way up to like 57.50, pull back, pull back to 56.50 and give you a buy setup. And now you have that transition that you're looking for. Okay? And I say it to you guys all the time, but you should do this frequently. You should cover the future on a lot of stocks that you look at because the future messes with your head. Right? You don't think so, but knowing the answer subconsciously messes with you. So cover the future so that you can kind of predict what's going to happen. Go bar by bar on the stock. I say it all the time. So the area part matters, right? Read the chart. The area part matters, okay? When I say support and resistance is an area, I mean it. And you're about to see what I mean. Poor Michael, poor Michael. Or Michael. Anyway, I took where it says entry, okay, right here. I took where it says entry and I blew it up on the left, right? I blew it up on the left. Now, you can see right here that the entry was right there and the stop loss was under that little bottoming tail, okay? And if you use that stop loss under the little bottoming tail there, then you stopped out. Plain and simple. And Let's not kid ourselves. I see it every day in the chat room. A lot of you guys try to use the absolute tightest stop possible all the time. I'm usually the one telling you to use a wider stop. You guys are taking like $2 stops on NVIDIA and it has like an 80 cent spread. Okay. You guys are not always, but frequently trying to find the tightest stop possible. Well, stocks need room to wiggle sometimes, especially higher price stocks. Well, the beginning of the day on this stock was very sloppy. It gapped up, left a bottoming tail, left a topping tail, left a green bar, then a topping tail, then a bottoming tail, right? But note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars down with a bottoming tail into $130 support, okay? Well, this is a possible long idea. But if you were too tight on the idea, you stopped out, then you watched it go higher. You watched it go $3 higher. So in this case, and I do it all the time, even with three bar plays, if I take an early three bar play, I usually give it the higher low of the day, not bar number two's higher low. I usually give it the high of the day. So this big bottoming tail is a very potent bottoming tail. For me, I'm gonna put the stop loss under here. now. Is it possible that gets tagged too? Sure, it's possible. But I'm going to put it a little bit under that area. And in this case, it would have saved you a heck of a lot of money. So what's the lesson? Support's an area. Give it room. If you do get stopped, get back in. You could have got stopped and you still could have gotten back in and still done okay on this trade, right? You would have gotten in at like 130.50. Your stop would be like 129.75, 75 cent stop. And this thing ended up going like two, three bucks. Fine. It's an area. Okay, it's an area. Another example. Here is a stock, okay, on the five minute and the 15 minute, both five and the 15, okay. You see the red bar engulfs the green bar, chops around sideways, and then does what? The entry triggers right at 850, right around 850. You put your stop loss right there. You're like, well, I don't understand. It stopped out on the penny. It stopped out on the penny, at the penny, to the penny. Because you didn't give it any room above 855. Like you're looking at it, you're like 850 by 855. Give it 50 cents. 
It's an $800 stock. And you just think the first bar of the day is like $10. What's 50 cents? 5%. It's not a big deal. Gets engulfed, comes back up, and then just trends lower and ends up going nearly, oh, well, that $8 move. Okay? There's the 15 minute three bar play inside of this little kind of five minute breakdown. It's a nice pattern. There's really, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. But it got you on the penny. Give them some room. But a lot of you guys immediately like, well, it barely has enough to go 2R, so I got to be as tight as I possibly can be. And da, 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 da. Okay? Am I wrong when I sat that was not such a strong breakdown? When I sat? Um, no, this is a decent little three-bar play. Right? You're in a downtrend. You can see it on the five. You're gapping down under support at 855. You have a wide range red engulfing bar. And you're holding near the low of the day. You got like a little bit of a 15 minute three bar play there. I'm okay with this. But one penny was the difference between making some money and losing some money. Now, what about this? How many of your, how about you, Jared? There we go. How many of you would have stopped out here and not gotten back in? You see this right there? I'm putting the arrows to it. Some people would get in on this red bar right there, right there, get in, and then get tagged. And then it moves higher. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Most likely, right? Stock moved up, triggered you in, went all the way back down, left the bottoming tail. And it ripped. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen bars in a row up from like 16 ish, 15, 50, all the way to 19, 50. The point I'm making is not that you should have taken this or shouldn't have taken this. Give them room. Do you see the green line? Do you see some tails floating under that green line right there? And you guys do this sometimes with your swing trades. I've seen it happen. You guys get tagged by like a dime or 20 cents on a $3 stop loss. Now, if you give it room and it hits you, well, shit happens. That's gonna happen sometimes. But if you're literally putting it a penny under every bottoming tail, you're not giving it much room. It's an area, it's not an exact penny, it's an area, okay? Here's another example, okay? Understand what trading is. It's an odds-based business. So right here, let's just say, you got in down here, okay, hypothetically. Let's just say you got in right there, okay? And you put your stop on the pink line, right? Let's just say you got in on this pullback, hypothetical, and your stop's there. The stock goes up to the high of the day, maybe you peel a little off, it moves up, pulls back, and you're gonna raise your stop right there. Let, that's it, let's do raise your stop under this pivot. It goes higher and you're like, oh, a lower high. And you get out right here. You get trailed out, only to watch it go much higher. Now, has this ever happened to any of you guys? Sometimes we're trailing out at the exact area we should be adding to our position. I'm raising my hand. I've done it. It's absolutely happened to me before. There are times it's happened to me and I consciously knew it. I sat and then, this is exactly where this stock should bounce and I'm gonna get out of break even. In this case, you're in the money, right? Because you bought it down here. But if you guys ever gotten out at the exact point a stock's supposed to pivot and go higher, and then you get out and it pivots and goes higher, give it some thought. Because I think it happens a lot more frequently or commonly than you guys think. Now, again, this situation is a little bit different because this person got in down here. But what if you took a breakout? What if you took a breakout? It moved up, right? In this case, it moved up like a dollar fifty it doesn't look like it but it is it's that's like a dollar fifty pulls back puts in a lower high and then you get out of break even and then the thing rips for the rest of the day and this thing didn't rip it ripped right i mean this thing went another nine dollars higher like 37 up to 45 eight dollars higher damn and you're getting out right there all over what 50 cents and then you watch it rip i'm glad it's never happened to anybody in here I know it's happened to me. But sometimes we're getting out at the exact point we should be getting in or adding to our position. Just give it some thought. 
Another example. Here's a stock that moves up, pulls back, and moves up. Okay, so it's in and up trend. You can kind of see that down here if you were to kind of make like a little bit of a trend line right there. Okay, right there. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. I mean, that is like a textbook trend line. Stock pulls back to the trend line, pulls back near support. It's a little below support. It's roughly a 50% retracement. I take it up here just under 22, down here just under 16. Well, that's a $6 move, let's call it. Three, half of that's $3. Well, there you are. You're right, right around that area. Okay? Right around that area. I mean, it's kind of nice. Not only are you at the trend line, not only are you around that 40 to 60% retracement, you have a doji bar, narrow body bar, change of color bar, bottoming tail bar. Your entry is right here and your stop's right there. Yeah, boy, looking good, right? You're just going by the book and you're checking off the boxes. Your Ollie Hop Noodle. Check, 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 check. Check. Shit. Right? Shit. You put your stop right under that bottoming tail bar, triggers you in, stops you out, and then laughs its ass off. It's like Rain Man. I can see you're upset. If there is a hell, sir, my father is in it, and he is laughing his ass off. That's what the HFT companies are doing, the big boys are doing. They are laughing. And you're going back, and you're sitting here going, but, but, but I did everything everything right and you did you took a pretty good trade just didn't give it enough room and that happens there's another kind of pivot right there did you get tagged probably trading is a game of pennies the tightest stop isn't always the best one if you did get tagged consider getting back in right give it some thought you guys remember this trade? This was recent. This was from this month. Nice daily, nice three minute entry. Didn't work. Sometimes we give them room and they still tag us, right? I gave this one some room and it still tagged me. You know how much it tagged me by? Seven pennies, seven cents, seven cents. So you have a choice. Take it on the chin or get back in. There you go, that's my new phrase. Take it on the chin or get back in. That's it, I'm gonna trademark that, okay? Don't steal it, I'm gonna trademark it. Take it on the chin or get back in, your choice. Stopped and trended higher all day. Gap was nice, the turnaround bar entry was solid and just took a little more, took a little more, okay? So learn right learn the language of the chart understand that things happen over pennies sometimes and the tightest stop isn't the best be objective right objectively listen to what if i could spell to what the chart is telling you if you're not sure don't pretend just move on this is probably one of the most important lines you'll read in all the lectures that I give. If you are not sure, don't pretend to be sure, just move on. Take a picture of it and review it later at the end of the day. But you're not taking it in real time with real money if you're not sure. I'm gonna say it again, if you're not sure, walk away. Take a picture of it and review it after the market closes, okay? Give support and resistance areas room to wiggle right i made a lot of mistakes if you get stopped out consider re-entering if you take it on the chin get back in this is how you trade because stocks do what they want to do and while yes there's a lot to be said about technical analysis bounces bottoming tails doji bars volume spikes multiple concepts converging in an area it's still not an exact science there's wiggle room in everything we do just like when we say oh wow two r is at 87 dollars but the pivots at 86.90 
Well, it could go to 87.10 and still be at that resistance point. It could go to 86.84 and still be at that resistance point. If there are areas, nothing's exactly correct. So I hope for you guys that you're seeing the importance, one, of multiple concepts converging in an area. Hopefully you're seeing the importance of not putting your opinion on something, letting the chart tell you about it. Just because a stock is up or down a gazillion bars doesn't mean it can't continue in that direction. When it's giving you a retest, when it's giving you a bottoming tail, when it's giving you a volume spike, when it's giving you relative strength or relative weakness, when it's at a trend line, when it's doing a narrow body bar, doji bar, those are the things you're looking for to help discern whether or not this is the actual top or bottom. Not because it's up nine bars, it's got to be that plus a lot of other stuff. And I'm, I'm being so persistent on this topic because every day in the chat room, especially recently, people are asking me about stuff and I'm looking at it like, well, why? It could pull back. Sure, BA could be at $2 right now for all I know. But it didn't give me anything in that area that suggests that this is the area I need to short it other than it looks extended and should pull back. Well, it looks extended and should pull back is not a reason to take a trade. It might be a reason, one of 10, but I need the nine other reasons to take it. One's not enough, okay? So learn the language of the chart. Listen to it, speak chart, okay? Because when you do, you're gonna make more money in my opinion. You'll be more profitable. So I hope that you guys learned a little bit about how to better read a chart, that stocks typically need more room than just a penny or two under a pivot or a bar. They need wiggle room because support and resistance are areas. And I hope you'll take those concepts, apply them to your trading, and be more profitable because of it. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.